Aloha guys and welcome back to another edition. Today we're going to be talking about prepping. I'm going to be talking about this because a lot of my friends keep asking me because they know I kind of prep and what I do and where to begin. So if you want to skip through all this and just start from what I do, I'm going to put the time to start here. If not, welcome back and today the reason why I prep is for any type of natural disaster. Okay, Anybody who preps is going to prep for a reason. And mine is for like hurricanes, tsunamis, as well as just regular storms um, and earthquakes. And of course, now pandemics. Uh, a lot of people kept asking me because we had our lockdowns and we were thinking they were going to shut us down for a second time. And then on top of that, too, we had hurricanes, you know, coming in. I mean, hurricanes don't stop just because of the pandemic. Right. So with that said, um, for me, with hurricanes and tsunamis, even like I said, just a regular storm okay, in Big Island, uh, some people were actually out of power because just a regular storm. It wasn't even a hurricane, but it was enough rain and wind to knock down some evasive trees, the albizias, and it knocked down power lines to some rural areas. So people were out of power for like a week. And in a rural area too, you can't just drive because they're crossing the street. I mean, the trees were blocking streets and stuff like that. So you had to kind of hunker down and kind of just live off of what you have. Now, some places... Um, in rural areas, especially in the Big Island, they have water catchment. So water is not too much of an issue, but food would probably be if you're not growing your own food on your own property. So with that said, prepping can be anything in general, what you feel is necessary for you to survive a tragedy or any type of um, natural disaster. Okay. Let me get the whole terminology of prepper and hoarding out of the way, because a lot of people think prepping is hoarding and hoarding i mean prepping is not hoarding because we prep ahead of time we have all these things on hand whereas hoarding is more when the state or whoever announces that there's going to be a hurricane coming a natural disaster then people go out to the stores and they hoard everything they buy all the water they buy and they wipe out the shelves of the grocery stores okay those guys are hoarders Preppers already have these things ahead of time, okay? You could have food and all these necessities, you know, a year before all this happens, right? That's part of prepping. So who is a prepper? I, I believe everybody's a prepper, okay? If you travel, for instance, okay, you're a prepper, okay? What do you do? You, you look up at where you're going. You're looking up the weather, how, how the weather is like. If it's raining, is it snowing? Is it sunny? You're going to pack the proper clothes for that environment at the time you're going. So if it's snowing, you're going to pack your snow clothes. If you're going to go when it's raining, you're going to pack rain gear, right? So that's part of prepping. See, prepping is all different kinds of things. Now, prepping for a disaster, especially in Hawaii, okay? Hawaii, you got to realize we are surrounded by an ocean. Everything that's imported or all our food is pretty much imported from the mainland or even from Japan or other countries, okay? It's imported. So where is our docks on the ocean? So if we have a tsunami, they wipe out our docks. Well, guess what? We might have to survive off of what, whatever we have on island until they can get the, the ports and up, uh, up and running. Now everybody's like, oh, okay, well, we have airports. You can play. Our airport is right next to the harbor. Okay. We even have a thing called reef runway. Okay. Our rear runway is basically on the reef or on the water. And... If a tsunami came on that direction and wiped out our harbors, they're also going to wipe out our airport. So until they can get all that up, I think they can get a port up faster than they can get runways up, right? If it got damaged. Um, so even for like the ships to come in, they'll have to get all that up. You know, maybe it might be a week or two, hopefully faster. But in the meantime, what are you guys going to do to survive during that time or even like a hurricane if a hurricane was to knock out power for a long time grocery stores usually when there's no power they can't it's all computerized right now so they can't really do any sales so what they do they close the stores down so in a hurricane situation and there's a big disaster if you prepped ahead of time and had all these essentials on hand you won't have to worry about food okay so now let me talk about what i do okay and because a lot of people ask me because they, they know and I, I've, I was doing it ever since I'm a kid. I am not a disclaimer now. I am not 
a professional. I am not an expert. It's just something I've done when I was a kid. My dad taught me. I learned from um, other organizations that I was a part of when I was a kid. And with that said, this is the first thing that I do is canned goods. Okay, canned goods is like the easiest and to me, to me, the easiest and the cheapest to um, prep for because they're canned goods. They last a long time. Okay, so like let's just say, okay, so for instance, this is um, tuna. We eat tuna uh, sandwiches maybe several times a month. Okay, so um, but then again, we bought this one a while ago and it still expires in 2023. Okay, that's three years. Okay, and we had it for a while, so you know, maybe three, yeah, let's just say safely three years. Okay, three years this lasts. Okay, uh, Campbell soup. Campbell soup um, was, I think, two years. So a lot of things are canned goods last at least two years or more. I even had some other things like canned salmon that was like four years uh, expiration date. So good, easy, um, and you're buying it anyway, right? So what do you do, right? You don't just buy two, three cans and, and put it in your cupboard and, you know, use it up. I suggest like Costco. Okay. I like to support small business, but buying in bulk is the easiest, cheapest, and, and more convenient, right? Way to do it. So go down to Costco, buy them by the case, and then, um, plan it that way. Okay. So for instance, you buy a case of say Campbell soup, right? Campbell soup would be, uh, say, let's say 24 in a case, right? And there's 52 weeks in a year. So you buy, say, one case and you eat that soup one can a week that's roughly six months but let's just say you eat you know, two cans a week now you're down to three months right so you're just gonna basically um, plan accordingly that way so for me what i do is if i eat one can of soup a week you're looking at one case for say you and your wife or whoever your family okay you're gonna have to do your calculations for me it's just me and my wife if it's for other people you have kids and all that you might have two cans so even a two cans is going to last you and one case is going to last you uh three months so you're gonna to have to plan accordingly that way so one case is six months for me and my wife okay so with that said you plan accordingly on how you do it. Now, for me, I plan for six months. You can plan for a month. You can plan for two weeks of, of getting by. I suggest at least a month, okay? So I do six months, so I would have one can. Actually, I would have two cases of Campbell's soup at any given time. So as I'm halfway through a case, that's only gonna last me three months. I'll buy another case. So I'll have like one and a half cases. Sorry, I'll have one and a half cases at the most on hand, right? So one and a half cases, and I, and I go through that one, case i have one case i didn't open yet right now remember i'll go through this within a year they have a two-year shelf life so you can actually buy more if you want if you have the room if you have the space um but for me i don't think you really need to because you'll have other foods as well instead of just soups right so i'm just using soup as an example but you'll have other things as well um to, to do like say tuna right so you have tuna as well um okay now that was the easiest and cheapest way is canned goods and you have to kind of plan out. For me, even toilet paper, okay? When there's a hurricane announced, everybody runs to the stores, they wipe out the shelves, the hoarders do, wipe out the shelves of all the toilet paper, but I'm just at home, just relaxing, enjoying, you know, whatever I'm doing, because I don't have to go to the store and buy, because I have at least a case, same thing with the Campbell soup, or soup, I don't want to name brands, but soup and stuff like that is because you do it maybe like, a case on hand all the time when you're halfway through the case buy another case those don't have an expiration date so those you don't have to worry about now another thing too with canned goods right expiration date put it on the uh i, I write it on a can when the expiration because you have to look underneath the can and then you have to kind of like for me my, i'm getting older my, my eyes are getting bad so you gotta keep looking for the date codes it's, it's a bit hard so i put it on here so it's easier to just see it's right right there so canned goods and you have to cycle that out okay you have to remember if you have a pantry you cycle them out you put the the new case in the back or on the bottom and you put the older ones on the top and as you use it up you crack open another one you buy another one and you cycle it out you put the old the the older ones on the bottom i mean the older ones on the top or in the front and then put the newer ones that you just get in the back okay it's a little bit more um 
organizational skills you need to get and, and kind of obtain. But with that said, that's one of the easiest, okay? Now, let's just say you're like my friends, some of them are my friends, not all, but some of my friends, they, oh, they don't like canned goods. Oh, canned goods. Are, they do fresh foods and stuff like that. Next would be frozen foods. But frozen foods will cost you more because the fact that it costs more. <laughs> canned goods are fairly inexpensive. But now when you're talking about canned goods, I mean, frozen foods, you're going to buy steaks, okay? You buy a tray of steaks at Costco. You cut them up, not cut them up, but you cut it open. You take one steak out. I have a vacuum sealer, okay? So I vacuum seal all the steaks. I put the date of when I bought it um, and put it in the freezer, okay? That's one way to do it. When you vacuum seal the bags, it lasts a lot longer than just throwing the whole tray in the freezer because when there's oxygen in it, then you can get freezer burn and, and the meat or whatever food can kind of go bad faster, right? Freezer burn. So when you vacuum seal it, no oxygen in the bag, it lasts a lot longer. So put the date on it and you, same thing with the canned goods, you rotate it out, you cycle it out. Oh, this is the older ones, this is the older ones, the newer ones, put it underneath. So as you go through them, you're going through the older stuff first and then so forth. Now, with that said, frozen foods does cost more because of course, that kind of foods does cost more than canned goods, but also you're gonna need a generator. Now my friend said, well, why do you need a generator? Because a generator, well, cause they were asking me during a pandemic, why do I need a generator, it's a pandemic. Uh, hurricanes, earthquakes, all that does not stop just because of the pandemic going on, okay? So you still need some form of electricity to keep that freezer going. Because a freezer probably will last two days without power. Other than that, I mean, the food in there will last two days without power at the most without always going in it, right? Um, but then again, if you're out of power for at least five days, all your food in there is going to get spoiled. And then all that money that you invested into to storing just got wasted, okay? So now, all of these things you can buy in bulk because you're going to eat it up eventually, right? Steaks, you're going to, you know, I don't know how often you guys eat steaks, but, you know, we eat steaks maybe once a week. So even if we bought a whole bunch of steaks, you know, we're going to have to buy a lot more to just make sure that we have at least six months on hand, right? Um, maybe that, you, because they cost a lot more, you might want to just have two or three months worth on hand. You know what I mean? So you have to figure out, now, when there's an emergency situation going on, it's not time to live in a life of luxury kind of thing. You kind of like have to kind of go below your means and, and kind of like live off canned goods for a while and kind of do those kind of things to at least survive, right? Because you know, you're not going to steak and lobster dinners all the time, right? During an emergency, right? So that's the next thing is frozen foods but now even when you have a generator you're going to need gas cans you're going to need gas cans on property because what happens during a hurricane right let alone an earthquake and all that everybody goes to the gas station they fill up their gas tanks and and so forth now a generator is going to run out of gas eventually right so you're going to need extra gas cans on hand to keep that generator going so you can keep that freezer cold so your food doesn't go bad right so you're gonna need gas cans now so you need at least five maybe you know four gas cans and that thing too it takes organizational skills you're gonna have to cycle them out you maybe fill up your your car with that gas every three months because they do go stale now gas does go stale it gets gummy it gets it goes bad um not not right away but it does so store it properly okay in in one of those flammable cabinets and stuff like that um also, you know, put it in your car every maybe three months, fill up your cars with those, and then go down to gas station and refill up those gas cans with fresh gas. Now, you can also use the gas for your lawnmower. If you have gas powered lawnmowers and stuff like that, use it to, to um, fill up those lawnmowers and stuff like that. And now, if you live in an apartment, you probably can't have a generator and stuff like that. So that's something you guys gotta kind of weigh out, right? As far as uh, frozen foods go, right? Or Actually, you know, of course, for the food, because you're going to need the, the electricity and stuff like that. So the next, after that, if, if you can't do all that kind of stuff, you know, MREs is, is another way, but I don't really suggest MREs because of the fact that the shelf life on this is like seven years. Okay, I think 10 at the most if you store it properly and stuff like that. Seven years, okay, great. But every seven years to maybe 10 years, you're going to have to buy new and it's not cheap now, okay? These things are not cheap. And then you're gonna have, this This is one meal for one person per meal, 
So let's just say in an emergency situation, you don't do breakfast. You kind of do like more of an early lunch and maybe a late dinner and you do snacks in the afternoon kind of thing, right? Like I said, no lap of luxury, okay? You're kind of like living as minimal as possible. So MREs, maybe say for just you and a wife or your husband or whatever, you know, for a day. If you have kids, then of course more. And these are not cheap, so it, it can get costly. And then now, every seven years, 10 years, you're gonna have to go and refresh all of these out and stuff like that. It can get costly. So I don't suggest it, but you can do it. This is another option, okay? And on top of that, these things have all kinds of stuff in them. And oh, I don't even have a knife with me. I'll go, I'll open this up. I used to always get scoldings for opening up um, things for my teeth, but okay. So you have, one thing about these, you have meals. These are for like the military, right? That's why. So you can actually um, um, survive off this in, in the woods and stuff like that because there's, this is your meal packet. Then you have um, your, these are like your, there's toilet paper, there's pepper, salt, gum, coffee mix and that. This is like your uh, condiments, yeah? Chocolate peanut butter. That sounds interesting, that's like Nutella or something. Um, your utensils, it comes with uh, the pack to heat up. Okay, so the, the newer technology, okay, I never used these when I was in the ROTC and stuff like that for survival training. These things were like a lot different. Um, but now they come with these packs where you put water in it, it heats up, you put the food pack in, you put the food pack in this, and it heats it up and that's how you heat up your food. Uh, the other way, we had to heat it up in like our little... Um, canisters and stuff like that, or uh, little cookware and stuff like that. So we have to pack a cookware with us. Now, uh, this is a lemon lime flavored juice or, yeah, and then steak sauce. So this is, what, what meal was this? Uh, beef, beef roast with vegetables, so steak sauce. And then there's crackers and, and so forth. So there's a lot of things in this. So it's not like you're just getting a meal, okay? Like this, this one you just get a meal. Now, I really suggest these, if you're gonna go the other route, say, let's just say you don't do canned goods and frozen food is gonna cost too much and you can't, you live in an apartment, you can't do a generator and all that kind of stuff. Well, this will be, to me, the next best thing. This shelf life is 40 years. It used to be 35, now they just upped it to 40 years, but this is freeze-dried foods. Now, another way you could do is if, if you have the land, you can farm and you can can your own foods. Now, canning foods, to me, I don't do that. That's, that's a huge process. But if you want to do that, you can do that. But there's a lot of things that you got to know and do and things you can't do because they can go bad if you don't do it properly. And you can get your family sick and stuff like that. So that's why for me, I just don't want to attempt it. Uh, but people do it and they're fine. You know, they, they actually live off of those foods because they farm. And when things go ripe and, and all that at one time, you can't eat it all one time. You, you share it with friends and family and stuff like that. I'm going through that problem because I, I grow a lot of vegetables and stuff like that. And yeah, when they fruit, they fruit all the one time and just, you just can't keep up. You end up giving friends and family, but then there's still a lot more you, that's producing. And so you end up like trying to eat it all or you, 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 try to, you can can it, right? Um, then also there's another way, there's a machine that you can buy and you can freeze dry your own foods, but that's another process. I'd rather just buy it, right? But I think it'll be cheaper. You can make your own food, you freeze dry it, pack it, and you'll have your own homemade meals. And, um, like this kind of stuff has a lot of sodium in it, but you know, I'm willing to just sacrifice that and just buy it. But, um, off the shelf because it's a lot easier and convenient for me because those machines, those freeze dry machines can get costly too. So, well, with that said, 40 year, 40 year shelf life. I bought this like two, three years, three years ago, maybe longer, you know, I think three years or longer. And it expires 2048, 2048. So 40 years. So if you're 40 years old, okay, and you buy these for emergency situation, and then you need to buy new ones, you're going to be 80 years old, right? So I mean, it's like, I don't, I don't think you even really care about um, prepping at that age, right? You're, you, you, maybe you will, and you might buy more. I mean, I would, if I was, I would like to live longer too. So, um, but then, but that's my point is if you're 30 or 40 years old, you're going to be like 70 or 80 years old. 
to you have to refresh it. Whereas like the MREs, if you're 40 years old, when you're 47, you have to replenish it. And then when you're four, uh, 50 something, you're gonna have to replenish it again. I mean, you see what I mean? You're gonna have to keep replenishing it. You're gonna have to replenish this four times, maybe five times compared to one of these. So you might wanna go with this route. And another reason why I like this route too, it's light. It's, it's freeze-dried, sorry, dehydration and freeze-dried is two different things, okay? Freeze-dried doesn't last as long as freeze-dried from what I've read and researched, okay? This lasts 40 years, it's light, okay? They took all the liquid out, like dehydrating, but it's a different process, but it's light. So what you do is you add boiling water to this, you seal it up and it'll hydrate back again, okay? So the reason why I like this is because if you live in, in Hawaii by the ocean in a evacuation zone, right? So if there's a hurricane or even like a tsunami that potential could come and you have to evacuate. If you have a bunch of these in buckets, okay? You can put these in like say the Home Depot buckets or, or whatever buckets you guys have, Lowe's, okay? Put a whole bunch of these in your buckets and you, you plan it accordingly, right? You can, do, you can do it whereas one is lunch bucket and one is a breakfast bucket or dinner bucket. And then you, you can pack a whole bunch of these in those buckets and they're light. So if you have to ever bug out, say, a tsunami warning you grab the buckets throw them in your car and you can go and to wherever you guys need to go very very transport canned goods heavy there's liquid in here so now if you ever have to get evacuated you're gonna have put all these in buckets because let's, let's face it you're gonna be eating these regularly so you're not gonna have you're not gonna put each all of these in buckets and then grab them out of buckets as you cook that's, that's too humbug you're not gonna do it okay if things are hard and difficult you're not gonna do it so my suggestion is if you're gonna do canned goods um, maybe have a small amount of these ready to go if you if you're living in an evacuation zone where you have to bug out right even if you're not in an evacuation zone and and your area where you live landslides and stuff like that you know potential by like the mountains and stuff you might have to bug out you know, maybe have just a few of these on hand. Okay, the, the key is not to go bankrupt doing this stuff, okay? You buy these things slowly, okay? Like the canned goods, right? You're gonna buy them anyway, you're gonna eat them anyway, at least within two years. You buy them, but you buy a case. As you run out a little, then you buy the next case. That's how you slowly get into it, okay? You know, I'm not saying go out and buy, buy tuna, soup, beans, in bulk and now you got like three hundred dollars worth of food that you just bought just in bulk just to to prep okay no slowly do it okay or you can buy these slowly too okay buy them put some in a bucket buy them put some more in the bucket but you know when it's full you seal it right on the label on the outside what's in it so you don't have to keep looking in and popping in and finding out what's in it just well, be strong enough. How many of them you put in there? Three, four packets, boom. Be strong enough, four packets. Um, beef stew, four packets. Uh, breakfast, whatever, you know. Organization, knowing what's in it and having all these things ready to go when you need, if you need to is always the better and safest way. Now, let's, let's put it this way. If everybody on this island or majority, say like 90% of everybody on this, because not everybody can prep big, but everybody can prep a little, okay? But if everybody was to prep on this island and had extra toilet paper, had water ready to go, had some basic foods piled up, you know, stored just in case, when there is a hurricane, a tsunami warning that is announced, and no one has to go out and to the stores and, and, and hoard and buy up and clear out the shelves. The stores will still be packed and ready for the next person that comes in that maybe needs, maybe, maybe someone prepped, their house got wiped out. Now they don't have anything. All their prepping is gone, it's, it's wiped out in the house. Well, now they can go to the store and have some stuff. But they can't right now because everybody wipes it all out. And now, you know, the stores are empty and now that person is out without nothing, right? So now they have to go to um, try and, and, and get some assistance, right, from the government. I'm talking about no assistance from the government, living and surviving off your own 4C of stuff. And, and let's just say, if there is no disaster in 20 years, 
maybe you can start eating some of these. You know, go camping. That's a, that's another way to to um, practice your your survival skills. Go camping with your kids. Go out in the woods. Take a whole bunch of these. Take a bucket. Just grab the bucket. Go camping. And teach the kids. Get them excited about about camping and and just living off of what you guys have and so forth. That's a great way for them to learn and and their survival skills. I mean, that's what I've done when I was kids. Just go out into the woods. In fact, me and my neighbors, we used to go hiking up that mountain, that very mountain back there. And we used to go camping overnight, two nights. Take, well, we never had these back then. We had canned goods, so we packed um, like soups and stuff like that. We'd make a fire and just throw the soup right on top of the fire and just heat up the, the soup. Because the canned goods are already cooked. They're pre-cooked, so um, unless stated, but majority is all cooked and then canned. We just throw it on the fire just to heat it up, you know, and that's it, you know, and we didn't even have sleeping bags, no tent, just sleep, um, just a little, uh, not tarp, but it's, you know, tarp like, but, you know, and sleep under stars like that. I mean, that's, that's what we did when we were kids. I mean, I don't want to do it now, <laughs> um, but then again, in a, a survival situation, I guarantee you I could probably do it again. So um, with that said, you know, those are the things you can try and, take away as far as what to start off with okay how to start off with and giving you some options on what to do as far as you know if you don't want to do the frozen foods part you know there's there's other options okay guys so don't let this discourage you always just start off small don't go huge start off small go small increments and slowly build up your your inventory and and have a pantry and treat it like a grocery store your personal grocery store where you can go in and just grab things that you need and then slowly stock it up and and replenish it but start eating up the old stuff and just cycling things out same with these you know you know as it gets you know if you're 20 years old you'll be 60 by the time these expire but you know maybe when you're 40 or 50 you start kind of like doing some fun activities and you can even go hiking hiking take one of these bags take a couple of them you know go hiking with your friends you bring a little solo stove cook it or heat it up actually just heating it up and deep, um, hydrating it again have a nice lunch, come back down and, you know, slowly you, you use it up and you just replenish it with new ones. I mean, but then again, 40 years is a long time. So there's no excuse on getting started. Um, you can get slowly by one, two, a month, one a week, up to you guys on how you guys do it. Um, canned goods, like I said, just buy them, replenish, buy more, buy more, buy more. Eventually you'll have your little... Uh, inventory to survive off if you ever needed to hopefully you never have to hopefully none of us ever have to but if you have to at least you're not stuck with nothing okay so with that said guys aloha and i'll see you in the next one mahalo